So just a little brief overview, and I'm going to refer to C++ here, though I could refer to other languages, but they're kind of different. If I do straight up C++ and I compile it, it compiles directly to machine language, which the CPU can understand. All right, so I may write like a for loop in C++, and it will translate to several instructions for the CPU, which is fine, but if I actually want to use the CPU as the CPU is literally built in a Win32 architecture, um, I can use assembly language instead. And all assembly language really does is gives, gives us um, English words for the ones and zeros. We'll see this quickly, but I can, for example, I can say add in assembly, and I can give it some registers that we'll talk about um, soon enough, and probably not in this video, but I can say add AX and BX, and uh, those are actually literally, they literally translate to ones and zeros that the CPU can understand. Whereas if I write a for loop in C++, well, the CPU has no idea what that means, and the C++ compiler has to translate it to things like add and, and other things that the CPU can understand. So hopefully I haven't confused you too much. You don't feel like you need to know C++ and or any other language to understand assembly language. But I kind of want to, if you do understand C++ or a higher level language, I kind of want to give you an idea of where assembly fits in. It is as low as we can get, as close as we can get, as intimate as we can get with a processor. All right, and so that's that's one reason I I love programming down to the processor is it's just it's real computer science if you ask me. Um, another way to think of this is if I wanted to know the answer to some complicated uh, algebra algebra question, algebra formula, or whatever, and I really didn't know algebra and I didn't understand this stuff, but I just said, hey, uh, so and so that understands algebra. Will you give me an answer to this problem? And they could say, oh, yeah. And then they go down to the calculator and they know how to work the TI-82 or 83 or whatever calculator they're using and, and all that. And so I'm kind of abstracted away from those details, whereas the dude that understands the calculator, he's down there in the guts and gore and, oh, it's just so gorgeous, isn't it? Anyway, we want to be the guys that understand the CPU, and so that's where I'm going with this playlist. Let me see if I can illustrate a little bit. And again, you don't need an C++. Uh, to do this playlist, but I, I do want to give a little example. I'm going to say file, new project, and you need to set this up. Um, I'm using Visual Studio 2010. 2012 is out, but I'm kind of old school that way, and it doesn't really matter as long as you can uh, get Visual Studio to work the way that I'm doing it. File, new, project, Win32 console application, Visual, Visual C++. I'm going to call it assembly scratch pad. So I'm going to scribble assembly language instructions into this. Click OK. It comes here. It gives me the beautiful wizard. Because that's what Visual Studio likes to do. It makes you feel like it's doing something for you. Um, Turn off pre-compiled header. Turn on empty project. We want nothing in there. Click finish. And we see here we have an empty project with some filter folders. I'm going to actually delete all three of these. Cannot delete the external dependencies. Right click here, add. You can't see it, it's off my screen, but I'm going to click new item, CPP file. Let's call it mainer, which will be where I'm going to put main. And if you don't understand what main is, that's fine. Just type what I type and you'll be good. Uh, basically, main here means when I run this program, it's going to begin its instructions right here. Now, what you're seeing is C++. And the reason why I'm using C++ is because I can trick Visual Studio in allowing me to write assembly and debug assembly, which I'll show you later. But I can do all those things via or by way of C++. So don't stress it. We'll, might, we'll do a little C++, which is fine. Control F5 to run this, build it. You can see down here it gives you a status, and we get this black window basically. N nothing happened because we didn't tell it to do anything. Basically, the program begins at this opening curly. There's nothing here to do. And then it hits the closing curly, and execution is complete. All right, let me, um, again, I don't expect you to understand this ahead of time. If you do, great. If you don't, uh, that's fine. But I'm going to write a loop. Uh, I less than 10. I'm going to trick the compiler into doing something for us. I'm going to say pound include IO stream 
using namespace standard actually kind of a bad thing to type that in C++, but this is a sandbox scratch pad, so I don't care. And the way we print in C++ very easily is we have our phone ring in the background. Hold on. Okay, anyway, we're going to write code like this. And, and basically this is saying, hey, print to the black window the value of i. Uh, and also put a new line or a return at the end of it. And then this for loop is going to loop through a bunch of instructions and print. And Anyway, let's just see if we can get Oh, yep, there we go. There it is. You see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Again, if you don't understand for if you don't understand for loops or any of this, don't worry about it. What I'm trying to illustrate is I'm going to hit F11 to start the debugger up. You can see here I got all these kinds of windows, and I'm actually going to close the windows for now. We'll get into those windows later. But uh, this yellow line marks where we are executing currently. And when I hit F11, it will move to the next line it's going to execute. And so on and so forth. But what I want to illustrate is, when I hit Control alt d this brings up the disassembly, which is the language we are going to learn in this playlist. But you can see this for loop, you know, it's one line of code here in C++. It turns into several lines of assembly. And then this C out, you can see, is several more lines of assembly, so on and so forth. And then there's a bunch of other stuff here. Anyway, lots of assembly instructions, but literally, these assembly instructions are telling the CPU what to do uh, instruction by instruction. So this is kind of fun, and this is the language we're going to work in over this playlist and get comfortable with the CPU.